Here we have another 3D printer review, and this time is the Sapphire Pro from Two Trees. This is a Core XY type of printer. It has high quality metal frame with very thick structures, also very thick smooth rods and aluminum bars. It has a nice and responsive touchscreen for the control, dual drive extruder, very very silent movement and that's because of the trinamic drivers we have inside on the controller board. It has a decent power supply and safety features, such as a fuse at the input, protected supply inside of the metal case and good insulation. You can use this printer with a USB connection or directly with a micro SD card. For the movement it uses linear rails and that makes the movement more silent and smoother. It has a power resume option, a filament detector and I was able to print PLA, PETG, ABS, flexible and also nylon with this printer at different speeds and temperatures. But I also had some problems with this, with the heated bed, with the extruder, the mounting process is a bit slow and we had some errors with the Z-axis lead screw and that resulted into some repetitive layer shadows in the print and we will see the solution for that in the video. So guys, if you are interested into buying this printer, I hope this video will give you a general idea. We will see the unbox, then the assemble process very quick, then we will see some tests with different materials and I will give you my pros and cons. So guys, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. We start as always with a quick unbox. So this is the box for the Sapphire Pro 3D printer from Two Trees and this is a Core XY type of printer. Inside of the box on the first layer we have the manual, one metal part for the printer frame and some bags with some several components. On the next layer we have the heated bed and two metal bars. Finally, on the last layer, we have the bottom part of the printer with the screen, electronics, the power supply, the Z-axis motor and so on. I take everything out on my table and this is all that we have. Here we can see the nozzle block of the printer. Then we have a PLA sample spool of 200 grams. Then we have a bag with the extruder and the step motor. Ok, so now here in this bag we have some tools some cables, the SD card and the SD card reader and some replacement parts. In some other bags we have these huge linear bearings and these are for those 1.2 cm smooth rods. So this machine is not using those common 8 mm smooth rods. So with thicker rods we have better stability. Then we have other bags with some screws, the rubber feet, the teflon tube and other metal parts. We also have the z-axis limit switch the metal spool holder parts, we have some springs and screws for the bed, we have some GT2 belts for the axis movement, the parts for the heated bed assembly including some sort of build tag material and the heat insulation for the bottom of the bed. As for the big parts we have the top part of the printer which is made from very thick metal. We have the bed support which is also made out of metal and we have the vertical bars, the smooth rods and the bottom case of the printer. This case has all the electronics inside and I like that because the printer will have a cleaner look. That's pretty much all we get with this kit and by the way I'm not quite sure what this is and there is nothing in the manual about this so I didn't use it. Ok so we go to the second part of the video which is to assemble the printer. I have to say this was not as easy as my last 3D printer kits that we have on this channel. I mean yes, we have some good indications in the manual, but mounting the printer will take you a little bit more time. I spent a total of around 2 or 3 hours, and that was at the same time I was recording the video, and I also had some small problems. Ok, so the first step was to add the vertical bars, and that was very easy, just a few screws. Then we had to add the smooth rods and the lead screw for the z-axis movement. Now we have to prepare the heated bed and place that over the smooth rods. For that make sure that you add the insulation below the bed first. Now we can add the top part of the printer that has the motors for the X and Y movement. Then we connect the extruder to the moving axis of the top part. Now we have to add the belts and this part is not explained very well in the manual, but with patience finally it's quite easy to make. Remember that this is a Core XY type of printer, so let me show an example. 
The motors are here on the top side on each side for X and Y movement. If I only move one motor, we have diagonal movement. If I move both in the same direction, we have movement in the Y axis. But if I move the motors in the opposite direction, we have movement in the X direction. So we need both motors at the same time in order to move in any direction. So the mechanical part of the printer is ready. We now have to route all the cables. For that they give you this tube that I don't really like. It's very rigid and ugly in my opinion. So I prefer to use this kind of protection strip and close all the cables. Once we have that, we pass all the cables through the frame and we have some protectors to cover the cables as well. Then all the cables will enter the bottom metal case through some holes and then we connect those to the main board. We also need to add the extruder on the side of the printer and the filament detector. You have to connect a teflon tube from the extruder to the hot end block. Final part was to add the build tag material on the bed and we are ready for the first print. For that insert the SD card that you receive with the printer and we have a few examples on it. The first print was this lighthouse tower. It seemed to be going ok, but then I've noticed some layer shadowing on the entire print so almost at the end I've stopped the print. Since we have the same patterns from top to bottom, I thought it must be the Z axis. So I got in contact with two trees and they told me it might be the Z axis coupler that was creating the wobble effect. I took it out and placed it back again but we still have the error. Then I've tried to change the lead screw. But the lead screw this printer is using is not the same as the one that I have on my other printers. As you can see the pitch for the sapphire lead screw is way smaller so if you change the lead screw you have to change the firmware as well and place a different millimeter per step value. If you use a bigger pitch lead screw this is what will happen. It will print some layers in free air. The best solution for this is to place another lead screw nut for the backlash. I didn't have another screw with the same pitch in order to do that. So I've placed some rubber bands to keep tension on the lead screw and that made a little bit of difference. As you can see this bench was printed with the PLA without the rubber bands and this grey one was printed using the bands and as you can see we have some improvements. The lines are still there but they are a little bit better. Without noticing the lead screw problem I can say that the printing quality with PLA is quite good. I've printed another towel with the same PLA material and this one was ok as well. We can still see the lines so I thought I should increase the temperature for the next prints and see if that will change anything. Now I have to say that I'm not a huge fan of the build tag material. Sometimes the part will stick too hard to the plate and it's very difficult to take it out but sometimes the part won't stick well on the edges and it can wrap or even get loose. That's why I've decided to take it out and use as always some painter's tape as I do with a lot of other printers. The next print was that second Benchy file. This one has a line in the middle of the boat but that's because of me. I was playing with the temperature settings. So I've printed the Benchy a third time and this time I got nice results. The layers are a bit better, we have no last filament and pretty decent overall quality but it's still not perfect. Ok the next PLA print was this printer test. Now the bridges test turned out ok. As you can see up to 25mm we can make good bridges. Also the tiny columns turn out ok. The tubes as well for 4mm, 6, 8 and 10mm. Now some small text details are very hard to read. The gap test is also ok but the overhanging test is not good at all. For some reason above 40 degrees we can't read the text anymore. After tweaking the temperature I've made two more PLA prints. One is this blue owl and the other one is this lucky cat design. As you can see we have very good results for the small cat. This was printed with gold color PLA material and we only have this error here and that's due to the fact that I didn't use supports. But the rest of the print is beautiful with good details and no other errors. The final PLA print was this blue owl. This is actually made to be a lamp. And again the results were quite good. Good details on the feathers, on the owl face and on the back. So printing PLA is good enough with this printer. I've also tested with ABS. The first print didn't stick well in place and I also had a lot of wrapping errors. So then I've made a smaller one and also increased the temperature. This turned out a bit better. Finally I've made the big one once again and with lower speed and this time the results were better. 
so ABS can also be done with this printer. The next print was made with this green PETG, and it was this vase. This part was printed in vase mode, and as you can see the final results are quite good. I've used the same settings as for PLA, but with a little bit more temperature. With the same material I've printed this case that I've used in the project. This turned out very good as well, with good precision and the size I wanted for my project. So PETG also works with this printer. Next I've tested nylon. I usually print this tower, and this one turned out ok. Actually nylon is not that difficult to print than PLA or PETG. But this material is a lot harder and will last more over constant use. Finally the last test was for flexible. The final result with this material is not that good, but we could use this part as a tire for RC car for example. All we have to do is to print at very low speeds, and the Bowden extruder won't give us problems. The important part is that we can make flexible, but very slow, because we have a dual drive extruder and that pushes better the filament, even if we use flexible. These were all the prints that I made with this printer, and I hope they will help you to make a general idea about the printing quality. Now I should tell you my opinion. Well, in overall I think it's a good printer, but let me just tell you a few things that I don't like first. I don't like the build tech material it has. I think it's not sticky enough. But that was very easy to fix with the painter's tape, so it's not a big problem. I don't like the extruder. I mean, I like the fact it's a dual drive extruder, but it's quite difficult to insert the filament. It was so difficult that by pushing a bit too hard I've broken the plastic lever. So you have to always take out the screw and the spring in order to insert the filament. So I think this part could get a bit better. I don't like the z-axis end stop. It's not very trusty because it touches the edge of the linear bearing, and it could sometimes be ok or bad, and that will give error to the level of the bed. Ok, so now I am a fan of mounting DIY 3D printers kits. But if you want a fast assembly kit, well this one is a little bit more complicated. For example, the heated bed could come already with the insulation glued in place, so we don't have to do that. But anyway, I enjoyed mounting this printer. Now the things that I like. Well, the body frame is very high quality. The entire frame is made from thick metal and that makes it very stable. I also like that it's very very silent. That's because it uses the trinamic drivers with a smoother output. And that's another thing that I like. The controller board has external stepper drivers, so it's very easy to change them or use the trinamic ones. With these drivers, the printer is very very silent. I also like the fact that it's using linear rails, for the axis movement, and very thick smooth rods for the z-axis. That results into a silent and stable movement while printing. I also like the fact that the electronics are inside of the metal case. And the power supply is powerful enough and the entire case is properly ventilated. I also like the touchscreen, it is very responsive and easy to use as well. And the print quality is good enough and I have to say that I think it could get better when I fix the lead screw problem. Ok, so now the price is around 360 euros, and you might say that that is a little bit pricey. But that's because the structure is very high quality, thick metal, thick smooth rods, a bit more expensive trinamic drivers and so on, so that will increase the price. So guys, this was my review of the Sapphire Pro printer. We've seen the prints, the parts that we receive, the assemble process and my final opinion. I hope that you made a general idea about this printer. You have some links below if you want to buy it. If you like this video, give it a like. And also consider subscribing and activate the notification bell. Thanks again and see you later guys.